Millennium Family Immortal Fragrance Introduction www.jiaoshuyuan.com A soul that relies on family incense to survive, sheltering this family for thousands of years. Reincarnation Enhancement The Story of a Traveler and His Descendants https forward slash forward slash www.zayashuan.com Chapter 1 Soul of the World You are listening at novelfull.audio Ads by Google equals window Ads by Google Push, in the year 2024, Exion Winter Chaoga Lutai, Heavenly Emperor, have you seen that those traitors, who collude with the Zhou people, are destroying the human world? Your descendants are about to be annihilated in the hands of the Western Land Small Bang. The King of Yin was disheveled, with blood stains still on his body that had not been wiped dry. The crown on his head was also damaged, and the gemstones embedded in it had also shattered. In the Battle of Makino, he was completely defeated, and he could never have imagined that Kai Hui would betray at a critical moment in the conflict between the two armies. I curse you, curse all traitors, curse the people of the Western Zhou dynasty. The King of Yin had no way to escape. Although the Shang dynasty was large, he had already become a traitor to his family. Outside the city, there were people who opposed him, and everyone wanted to kill him, not only those feudal lords, but also fellow Yin people. He wants to have a grand sacrifice, using himself as a sacrifice, praying to the heavenly emperor to bring down divine punishment and eliminate all those who oppose him. Pop pop pop. The king of Yin was ignited by a raging fire and knelt in the flames, praying to the statue of the heavenly emperor on the altar. Suddenly Pai Li Pa. The statue is cracking open, and the figure of a young man appears. You. The king of Yin was both surprised and delighted, thinking that it was the heavenly emperor who came to help him. However, when he saw the young man's appearance clearly, he was very confused. However before he could think for too long, the young man held a bronze short sword in his hand. In a blink of an eye, a single sword sealed the throat. The king of the Shang dynasty died in the hands of a young man. The young man didn't talk nonsense, but skillfully cut off the head of the Yin king, took away the crown, and left the Lu Tai. On the deer terrace, one can still see a weeping woman, who was the favored concubine of the king of Yin, Daji. You. Daji looked at the young man in terror. The young man in front of him was the one who had been specifically responsible for serving her and the king of Yin for many years. Shu. The boy stabbed the short sword into Daji's heart and took his life. Leaving Lu Tai and standing on the city tower, the young man waited quietly for the arrival of the Zhou army. The younger generation is incompetent and wastes my 100000 incense. The young man had a cold tone and didn't care at all about killing the king of Yin and his beloved concubine. His true form is called Exion, which comes from the blue star and has traveled to this world for 2000 years. At the time of his passage, the Yenhuang alliance had not yet appeared, and at that time he was just a wild man without a father or mother. Reincarnation after reincarnation has made him understand his own abilities. As the founder of the Exion family, as long as the family does not perish, his consciousness will not disappear, and he can occasionally consume incense and fire points to reincarnate himself into the descendants of a certain family. During the waiting period, the young man Exion checked the information about his family. Family History 2024, Family Members, 1 500, Family Incense, 1145 The two abilities brought to him by this family are Reincarnation and Enhancement Reincarnation by consuming 100,000 incense points, one can be reincarnated onto a fetus in a certain family and start a brand new life. Enhancement Consuming 100 points of incense value can enhance a family member's attributes by one point. Consuming 1,000 points of incense value can refresh a family member's talent. Only the 500 individuals with the highest blood purity can be considered members of this family. The actions of family members will add corresponding incense to the family, and the family will also add a little incense to worship ancestors every year. 
Each family member provides a small amount of incense each year, with a maximum limit of 500. Over a thousand years of accumulation, destroyed in an instant. The last reincarnation was due to the Great Flood, which almost wiped out the Exion clan, one of the top ten strongest clans in the world. As the founder, Exion had to reincarnate and turn the tide. Now, over a thousand years have passed, and the 100,000 incense value accumulated through hard work has been exhausted. More than a decade ago, the King of Yin was conquered in all directions and surrendered to many clans, including the Su family, the enemy of the Exion family. The Su family presented the beautiful woman Daji and received a reward from the King of Yin. Daji incited the King of Yin to conquer the Exion family, resulting in the downfall of the Exion family. The people were slaughtered, and only a few became slaves. As the founder, Exion had to reincarnate and be born as the fetus of a slave within the family. Since he was born as a slave and had no name, he decided to use the name of his first life as his name. In order to improve survival rate, Exion strengthened many attributes for herself and brushed three talents for herself. Each family member can have a maximum of three talents, and the three talents in this life are invincible from all poisons, innate holy body, and language genius, non-invading by hundred poisons toxic immunity 90% the holy communion has a strong physique, a long life of 100 years, and the ability to self-recover. The efficiency of learning a language has significantly increased as a language genius. The Yin people once whipped him with whips, leaving many bloodstains on his back, but those bloodstains disappeared in just over a year. A new era has arrived again. Looking at the raging fire in the city, I let out a faint sigh of joy. He has seen too much of such things. When he first arrived in this world, he still cared about his loved ones and would cry bitterly over the passing of his beloved. However, thousands of years have passed, and everything has gone with the wind. Suburb Jifa's army has finally arrived. The faces of the Zhou people were filled with joy, although their king had been encouraging them on the way, telling them that they would definitely win. But the hundreds of years of terrifying rule by the Yin people have cast a shadow over everyone in the world. Even before the Zhou people, many feudal lords wanted to resist the rule of the Yin people, but they all died and committed genocide. In the crowd, the leader of the Su family looked towards the city wall, seemingly searching for the trace of his daughter Sadaji. The Su family did not sincerely submit to the king of Yin. In order for the entire clan to survive and not be slaughtered by the Yin people, he was forced to offer his own daughter. Afterwards, he secretly formed an alliance with the Zhou people and finally found the book garden www.zhaoshuyuan.com, which is today. Congratulations to the king. Xian knelt down on one knee on the city wall, holding the head of the Yin king, who was also wearing a crown symbolizing the power of the Yin king. The king of Yin wore a broken hair and a crown, which was completely different from the Zhou people who wore hair and crowns under the city wall. Most of the feudal lords in the world have broken hair, and some even wear their hair and hair, with very few tying their hair. At this time, tying hair was just a custom among the Zhou people and other small states in the western region. D. Exian's Head G.F.A. looked at the head in Exian's hand and was surprised, but she didn't show it. D. Exian was a Japanese name given to the king of Yin. In the past, the Japanese name was very strict and it was often only after death that one would choose a Japanese name based on their lifelong achievements. Only the deceased king of Shang was eligible to be called emperor. However, any system is influenced by the people of the world, and there is no eternal system, only an eternal human heart. For nearly a hundred years, successive Shang kings have been eager to claim themselves as emperors while they were alive, believing themselves to be gods in the mortal world and even giving themselves Japanese names. Everything has become chaotic. People's hearts are always unpredictable. Did the former king of Shang receive more kindness than the king of Yin? Did they receive less sacrifice for the living than the king of Yin? Why are the lords of the world willing to follow the former king of Shang? Once, 
The king of Shang ruled the world together with all the feudal lords, and everyone could gain their own benefits and coexist harmoniously. Now, the decline of the Shang people's own strength has given the feudal lords the courage to resist. The Shang king also wants to monopolize the benefits and is unwilling to share them with the feudal lords, giving them a reason to resist. Those who achieve the way will receive more help, while those who fail the way will receive less help. That's all. Xian has lived for over 2,000 years, and he sees through more than anyone else. Chapter 2 Xi Nun. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Ads by Google equals window. Ads by Google. Push, one year later Shindi, from now on, this will be our fiefdom. Xian stood on the chariot and pointed to the vast lake in front of him, saying. Merchants relied on the technique of smelting bronze to conquer the world and control the feudal lords. But as more and more feudal lords themselves mastered bronze smelting techniques, possessed their own bronze weapons, agricultural tools, and armor, the technical advantages of merchants were gradually flattened, and controlling the feudal lords became increasingly difficult. They could only increase their sacrificial efforts to intimidate the feudal lords. Nowadays, the people of Zhou have become the new co-rulers of the world, and they have adopted new methods to control the world. That is where the production of bronze and salt is controlled. Divide the feudal lords into bronze and salt producing areas, and indirectly control the entire world by controlling bronze and salt. Xindi is located in the northwest of the Su family, once the habitat of the Xian family. It is rich in soil, salt, grass carp, and also has some agriculture. More than a decade ago, the Xian people were exterminated by the king of Yin. Now, the last Xian person has returned to their homeland. However, this place has long been the territory of the Yin people, with several Yin nobles ruling over Shindi. Not all Yin Shang nobles cooperated with the Zhou people. Although most of them disliked Emperor Xian, they were also unwilling to cooperate with the Zhou people. They maintained a neutral and watchful attitude during King Wu's conquest of Zhou. The Zhou people have eradicated Dxian, this bastard for us. We are grateful to the Zhou people, but now they should return to the western land. Your army should not continue to stay on the land of our day merchants. The nobles of the Yin Shang dynasty who ruled over Shindi sent envoys to speak to Shindi, who had been granted fiefdoms. King Wu has infeft me here, and from now on, I will be the ruler of this place. All of you are my subjects. With the support of the Zhou army, Xian was not polite to the envoys of the Yin Shang nobility. At this time, there was no perfect posthumous title system, and GFA had given himself the honorific title, King Wu, in advance while he was alive, just like the Yin king had given himself the Japanese name Emperor Xian while he was alive. All systems are influenced by current people, and the specific situation is closely related to the personal character of rulers. Only by killing chickens and warning monkeys can we deter the remnants of the Yin people, said a Zhou warrior to Xian. Xian was conferred the title of Xian Nan by King Wu Jifa. The Sodat called Xian Nan refers to the hereditary officials who have been guarding the salt in Xian's land for the Zhou Emperor for generations. The salt mines here have been targeted by the Zhou people. Excuse me, everyone. Xian respectfully said to the Zhou warrior. The army of the Zhou people did not stay in one place for a long time. They marched everywhere, mainly to help various feudal lords establish their ruling authority in the fiefdoms. As the monarch of Shindi, Shindi's entire family consisted of only six soldiers, seven pairs of bronze armor, a chariot, and several bronze weapons. GFA didn't even reward the slaves to Xian. If she wanted slaves, she would go to the fiefdom and catch them herself. Currently, the population of the entire Xian country, including Xian herself, is only seven. These six soldiers were originally slaves of the Zhou people, but they were rewarded to Xian and became Xian soldiers for their contributions in assisting the Zhou people in battle. What are you doing? How dare you kill the envoy in my day business? The noble envoy of the Yin Shang dynasty sensed something was wrong. 
The era of the Yin Shang dynasty has come to an end, and now it is the era of our Zhou people. The Zhou warrior sneered and stabbed a sword into the abdomen of the noble envoy of the Yin Shang dynasty. In the following month, the Zhou army carried out bloody slaughter in Xindi. Many Yin people were killed, captured Yin people were captured, and they would be transported to Luoyi in Haojing, becoming slaves of the Zhou nobles. The Yin Shang nobles who voluntarily surrendered were enfeffed as vassals by GFA and included in the Zhou people's enfeoffment system. One month later, I have heard that there are also many Yin people in the eastern region who are not satisfied with Zhou. We will go to the east to suppress the Yin people there. The rule and stability of Xindi can only rely on you. The Zhou warrior left with his army and gifted Xian some bronze weapons and a Yin girl, slave. This place is too open and we have too many enemies. Let's go to the northwest of the lake. Xian drove his chariot with six soldiers and a slave from the Yin people to settle on the mountain northwest of Xian Lake. After spending a few days building a simple thatched cottage halfway up the mountain, Xian began her development plan. The Yin girl was tied up in the house, while the chariot and horse were tied at the foot of the mountain. You don't have to be so sad, in the history of future generations, you will leave a name in the annals of history. After celebrating with the young girl and leaving her with a family lineage, Xian comforted her. The Xian family will eventually become famous and leave a lasting impression in history, and this young girl in front of her will also be admired by people all over the world as a grandmother who will spread branches and leaves for the Xian family in the future. To the south of the lake is a salt-producing area, and many clans want the salt here. One month later evening Xinhu Southwest Salt Lake, Xinchi, many Yin people came together, taking salt from the salt pond, boiling the salt water in a cauldron, and finally obtaining coarse salt. These coarse salts will be transported back to their respective clan villages. The Zhou people occupied our salt pond and appointed a man named Xian to manage it. However, that Xian man was also a mediocre person who fled with his soldiers. This salt pond has returned to our hands. An elderly Yin man commanded his clan to sun-dry and boil salt, and poured the salt that had already been sun-dried a few days ago into the cauldron, preparing to bring it back to the clan. This Yin old man twisted his hair into a braid, then wrapped it around his head in circles and tied it with a cloth strip. At first, they didn't dare to come here to fetch salt. Because the salt pond here is nominally owned by the Zhou royal family, Xinan, as a hereditary official, guards this salt pond and pays tribute to Lui every three years. If anyone dares to stop during this period, it is not a joke to find the sixth master of the emperor in Luoyi at the Shuyuan www.chaoshuyuan.com. However, just as these unarmed and unprepared Yin people were happily taking salt. Rumble. A chariot rushed over, with seven people on board. The leader, holding a bronze sword, commands. There is one person driving a tank, one person holding a long spear, two people holding a spear, and two people pulling a bow and shooting arrows. Most of the people who came to fetch salt were women and children, who were panicked. That person should be their leader, kill him. On the chariot, Exion commanded the chariot to charge towards the old man of Yin. He has been waiting for this day for too long. Proactively giving up the salt pool that was impossible to defend, enticing the Yin people to come and fetch salt, and then catching the Yin people off guard, capturing some of their slaves, and cultivating farmland for themselves, thus strengthening the Exion country. The old man of Yin fled towards the south, but how could he surpass the chariot? In no time, Exion's chariot caught up with the old man. Zhou Ren, you've been bullying me too much. I don't agree with Zhou. One day, the heavenly emperor will come to the mortal world and destroy you Zhou people, as well as their claws and teeth. At the moment of death, the old man of Yin glared angrily and cursed the people of Zhou. You say too much. Exion doesn't care about such curses at all. He has heard too much. For over two thousand years, those losers have always liked to be so incompetent and angry. Shu. The spear pierced into the old man's chest, 
Xian cut off his head, and shouted in the language of the Yin people to the fleeing Yin people, surrender not kill. Subsequently, he drove his tank and continued to pursue the fugitives. Some Yin people who couldn't run simply knelt on the ground and prayed to Xian for surrender. Chapter 3 Yin New You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Ads by Google equals window. Ads by Google. Push, the next day Xian and six soldiers escorted 30.2 Yin slaves to the mountain. In fact, there were far more than 30.2 surrendering Yin people, but in order to prevent too many slaves from becoming uncontrollable, Xian only accepted a portion of young women and young men, while the other surrenderers were released directly. Putting it back is not because Xian is kind, but because he is considering the future. If the surrendered Yin people are slaughtered, then in the future, other Yin people will feel that since surrender is also death, it is better to fight to the end. If this situation occurs, it will be very unfavorable for the development of Xinhua. Killing is just a means, not an end. For over 2000 years, Xian has warned her descendants more than once, but unfortunately not many have listened. Among the 30.2 surrendered Yin people, there were 8 young women and 20.4 young men. This is the result of intentional selection. Xian took in a Yin woman as her slave and asked six soldiers to choose one woman each. These warriors fight year dot round and naturally need to meet their physiological needs. The remaining 20.4 young Yin people were tied with ropes, preventing them from running quickly. Are you afraid of me? Am I a very bad person? Looking at the timid slaves of the Yin people, Xian revealed a gentle smile. Xian understands many languages, especially the language of the Yin people, and has become proficient. The Yin people had pale faces, some of them had broken hair, some were disheveled, and most of them twisted their hair into a braid and coiled it around their heads. Watching the frightened slaves of the Yin people, Xian did not mock them, but kindly took out a few pieces of dried wild boar bacon from the house. You work for me, I'll give you food. For those who perform well, I will restore their freedom and make them my soldiers to fight alongside me. The slaves of the Yin people clearly did not believe Xian's words, they curled up together in extreme fear. On the battlefield, they saw with their own eyes that Xian was pierced by a long spear, but did not die. He just lay on the tank and slept for a while, and his injuries healed mostly, leaving only a bloody scar that was slowly disappearing. During this period, due to the vigilance of the Yin people at the foot of the mountain, they did not come to the salt pond for the time being. Therefore, Xian asked six soldiers to take turns supervising the work of the Yin slaves, mainly cultivating terraced fields and planting corn halfway up the mountain. Xian's main source of food is fishing for fish and shrimp in lakes, followed by hunting in the mountains and forests, and then plundering the Yin people at the foot of the mountains. As for agriculture, it is still just beginning. Most of the slaves of the Yin people held their breath, unwilling to settle down as slaves and always found ways to slack off while working. However, not all Yin slaves were arrogant. There was one Yin slave who worked diligently and looked forward to the reward promised by Xian. Ling, you're really damn it. Are you really willing to enslave Zhou people? In the farmland being reclaimed, other Yin slaves angrily rebuked the hardworking Yin slave. I just hope to suffer less. If I can regain my freedom, who would be willing to be a slave to others? Yin Nu, known as the Antelope, quickly explained, if there really are people from our tribe to rescue us, I will naturally resist the enslavement of the Zhou people with everyone. It's best, humph. A Yin slave snorted coldly, then continued to work hard, pretending to be working hard. And not far from the farmland, Xian was watching what was happening in the field. The Yin people were not one piece, and there were also conflicts within them. A soldier truthfully reported his observations over the past few days. If they were all united and united, the Zhou people would not say that 800 feudal lords would help. Even with the help of 8,000 feudal lords, they would not be able to replace the rule of the Shang dynasty. Xian's faint words were full of satire, and after that, 
he ordered the soldiers to keep our promise and give him rewards. Give him a reward. A slave. The soldier was puzzled, just a slave. Even if he broke his promise, what would happen? Is it necessary to keep his promise for a slave? He asked, slaves may not necessarily be grateful to you. I have seen many ungrateful slaves. However, Xian only explained a little. Keeping promises is not for the slave to repay kindness, but to plant a seed in the hearts of other slaves, a heart that believes that as long as you obediently submit, you can gain benefits. Subsequently, the soldier followed Xian's instructions and announced to Yin Melling, Young man, your diligence has moved the monarch. The emperor has decided to reward you with a three-dot-day rest. As soon as these words were spoken, the other Yin slaves became even more displeased with the antelope, feeling that it had betrayed the merchants of Dei. The prejudice in people's hearts is a big mountain, and the Yin people will help us enslave the Yin people. Xian left this sentence and took other soldiers to the mountains and forests to hunt, supplementing food for everyone. In the following month, antelopes were constantly rewarded, including rest, food, and even women. The more antelopes are rewarded, the more the other Yin people detest antelopes. They dare not resist us, they can only vent their anger on the Yin slave who was rewarded by us. Xian occasionally observes the situation of the Yin slaves and is planning the next plan to go down the mountain to catch them. Call the Yin slave named Ling, I have something to tell him, Xian instructed the soldier. Understood. The soldier respectfully left the thatched cottage. In no time, Yin Nulling was brought along, and his legs trembled. However, for the dignity of the Yin people and to avoid being misunderstood by other Yin people, he did not kneel, but stood and talked to Exion. Are you afraid of me? Although it's just a young body, Exion smiled like a kind old father. Do I look like a bad person? What instructions do you have? E. Nulling didn't answer Exion's words, just tried to remain calm. I want to live, but I don't want to give up my dignity. Exion's heart evaluated E. Nulling like this, but on the surface, it still seemed gentle. Last night, a sheep was stolen and killed. Someone complained to me that there was a Yin Nugan in the middle of the night, Xian said, looking at Yin Nulling's eyes. Yin Nulling's eyes were filled with panic. It seemed that he knew who had stolen and killed the sheep raised by Xian when searching for Shuyuan www.chaoshuyuan.com. Do you know who it is? Xian pretended not to know and asked Yin Nulling. No, I don't know. Yin Nulling was too flustered in his heart and unconsciously referred to himself as a slave. I believe you. Xian did not expose Yin Nulling, but there is always something that so many Yin people know. I have decided to ask every Yin person. After speaking, regardless of Yin Nulling's tight pupils, he instructed him, please step back first. Yes, master. Yin Nulling took a long breath and left the thatched cottage. Everyone is a businessman, Yin people, so they won't falsely accuse me. No, they won't. Yin Nulling was still numbing himself in his heart. He naturally knew that it was a member of the same clan who stole and killed the sheep, but he dared not say it, nor did he want to say it. He just wanted to escape the painful life and did not want to really betray the clan. The next morning Xian gathered a group of Yin slaves together and said gently to them, I heard someone stole and killed a sheep. I don't know who did it. The Yin slaves dared not say a word and dared not breathe, so they naturally knew who did it, and many people ate lamb together. As long as you point out the person who stole the sheep, this matter will no longer be pursued, and everyone will rest for one day. The first person who dares to speak the truth will rest for seven days, Xian added. Subsequently, a soldier whipped his whip fiercely and said, If we shield each other, each person will be whipped. Yin knew, Look at me, I look at you. Later, a Yin slave couldn't resist the temptation and stood up pointing at Yin Nulling, saying, It's him, he stole and killed that sheep. Boom! Yin Nulling's heart was like a bolt from the blue. He didn't want to betray his tribe, but they betrayed him. 
Chapter 4 Shinzi You are listening at NovelFull.audio Ads by Google equals window Ads by Google Push, when a person is most desperate, what happens when someone gives them hope to survive? The Ean slaves rejected the antelope and pushed him out as a scapegoat. However, Exion forgave Ean Nulling's act of stealing sheep and made Ling his seventh soldier, as well as the guardian of the Ean slaves. In the eyes of Ling, Exion is a truly good person. She also keeps her promises when dealing with slaves, and is gentle with others. She never gets angry, treats prisoners well, and releases those who have been captured alive. In the eyes of other Ean people, Exion was amiable and did not punish them. After more than half a year of land reclamation, the first farmland has been opened up and the first autumn harvest has arrived. During their leisure time, the Ean slaves also built simple thatched cottages for themselves. Exion's woman also conceived his first child for him and is currently recuperating at home. Moreover, in the past six months, when Exion took his soldiers out hunting, he also captured some livestock such as goats, bison, pheasants, ducks, etc., and brought them back for captive breeding. However, some slaves unfortunately died, and two slaves wanted to escape but were caught by other slaves and eventually beaten to death. If slaves die, they can still be arrested, but if we allow them to flee, even if we have many slaves, it will be difficult to manage. In the past, King Zhou sheltered runaway slaves from various nobles, which caused dissatisfaction among the nobles of the Yin Shang dynasty. King Wen, Ji Chang, went against the trend and captured all the slaves who had fled to Zhou Yuan, sending them back to the clans of the Shang nobles, winning their favor. Usually, Exian always tries his best to show his humanistic care for the slaves, but if the slaves want to escape, he will never show mercy and will kill them as they please. Currently, the situation in Xinghua is as follows. Country, Xian, Chinese, 7 is slave 3052 acres of farmland, livestock, 3 sheep, 2 cows, 15 chickens, and 6 ducks hunting and fishing are still the main sources of food in Xinghua, while agriculture is only a guarantee as a source of food. Winter of 2027 Just as Exion and the soldiers were still planning to go down the mountain to catch slaves, an envoy from the southern land came. King Wu passed away, and the new king was young. Wang Shudan, Duke of Zhou Jiden, wanted to usurp the throne. Our lord raised troops to clear the king's side, eliminate the usurper Dan, and restore the state of our great Zhou dynasty. Immediately order Lord Exion to release the Yin people, pay tribute to Yen, and send troops to assist our lord in suppressing the rebel Dan. This envoy was sent by Uncle Hua. After conveying Uncle Hua's orders, he continued to head east to mobilize more vassals to clear the king's side. Xian verbally agreed to the order of the local envoy and respectfully escorted him away from Shindi. However, he did not intend to send troops or tribute salt. As for releasing the slaves of the Yin people, it is even more impossible. Uncle Hua may have colluded with King Lu of Yin, Wu Gung, otherwise he wouldn't have let us release the slaves of the Yin people. Although Xian has traveled to the Blue Star, he is not familiar with history, and his current judgment is entirely based on the actual situation. In order to appease the descendants of the Yin people, King Wu Jifa preserved the sacrifices of the Yin people and allowed Emperor Xian's son Lu to inherit the throne. At the same time, he also honored the descendants of the previous co-lords of the world as guests of the Zhou royal family and honored them as duke, which is known as the Two Kings and Three Stricts. Previously, the nobles of the Yin people to the south of Xinhu had also sent envoys to Luoyi to accuse Xinan of capturing the Yin people as slaves in front of King Wu, disrupting the friendly relationship between the merchants of Dei and Xiaobang Zhou. However, King Wu only verbally blamed Exian for not being able to capture the Yin people who had already been included in the feudal system without reason. After verbal criticism, King Wu exempted the tribute from the state of Exian for thirty years. The external explanation is that Exian was too poor and only exempted the tribute for the sake of the people of Exian. However, Exian understood it clearly. 
King Wu Jifa only superficially respected the descendants of the Yin Shang, but in fact, he had always been very wary of them and tried every means to weaken their power. Verbally blaming Exian Nan was to establish an image in the minds of the elderly and young of the Yin Shang, so that the nobles of the Yin Shang could be the subjects of the Zhou dynasty with peace of mind and not rebel or cause trouble. The exemption of tribute from the state of Exian was to encourage Exian to continue capturing the Yin people as slaves, reduce the population of the Yin people, fundamentally weaken the power of the surviving Yin Shang people, and make them lose the capital to resist. The late king, Wu Wang Gfa, only asked me not to capture the Yin people who had already submitted to the heavenly king, Zhou Tianzi, and did not say that I would not capture the Yin people who had not submitted to the heavenly king. Some of the Yin people in the south submitted to the heavenly king, but there were still many who did not submit to Zhou. They regarded the heavenly king as their enemy. As a loyal minister of the heavenly king, I should help the heavenly king eliminate these barbarians who did not submit to Zhou. At this critical moment, Uncle Hua's position was biased towards the Yin people, and he even asked me to release the captured slaves of the Yin people, and even asked us to help him attack Loi. I'm afraid he has already colluded with the remnants of the Yin people. After learning from the envoy that King Wu had passed away, his daily name was Di Ding, his honorific title was Bin Emperor, the new king ascended the throne, and Wang Shudan assisted in politics, and so on. His first idea is that this is a great opportunity for Xinghua to seize the opportunity and grow. The Yin people, Hua Xu, and others colluded, and they would inevitably go south to attack Loi. At that time, the land would be empty, and we could take the opportunity to go south to plunder, capture slaves, and take the bronze from the treasury. Xian temporarily cancelled the plan to go down the mountain to capture the slaves of the Yin people, and prepared to wait for the main force of the Yin people at the foot of the mountain to attack Loi. When there were only old, weak, women, and children left in the clan, he would take the opportunity to go down the mountain and plunder the Yin people's clan. Two more months later spring of 2028 waiting hard, finally waiting for the opportunity. The three supervisors rebelled, and the Yin people's clan to the south of Xinhu sent their young men southward to assist King Lu of Yin in attacking Loi. The three supervisors reached a cooperation agreement with the nobles of the Yin Shang dynasty, seeking the Shuyuan www.chaoshuyuan.com to eliminate Wang Shudan. After that, the south of Loi belonged to the Zhou people, and the north of Loi was returned to the Yin people. The Yin Shang and Ji Zhou coexisted peacefully. The world is vast, accommodating the two heavenly kings of Shang and Zhou. Fight for me, you can gain freedom and become more noble Exian people than the Yin people. You will transform from slaves to slave owners, and you can also have your own slaves. In order to expand the army and expand the plunder harvest, Exian opened up an upward passage to the Yin slaves. As long as they helped him go south to plunder the Yin people, they could break free from their slave status. In addition, Exian would reward the captured Yin people as slaves, making them also slave owners. Under Xian's repeated training, most of the Yin slaves had lost the courage to resist. At this moment, hearing Xian's promise and keeping it all along, their already dead hearts became active again. The Yin people had a high enthusiasm for participating in the war, but Xian only selected the five Yin people who usually performed the best. These five Yin slaves were usually very obedient and never rebelled. They even took the initiative to help Exian catch those Yin slaves who attempted to escape. Rare things are precious. If everyone has the opportunity to be promoted, they will not be grateful to you because they will think it is reasonable because in their view, others have also been promoted, so their promotion is also deserved. Only by selecting a portion and giving them promotion opportunities, will they be grateful to us, because such opportunities are not available to everyone but rather to them through our generosity. You need to make them understand that everything they have is given to them by us, not earned by them themselves. Xinzi governed the country with benevolence, so the Yin people surrendered, records of the Grand Historian Xian family. Chapter 5 Southern Expedition 
You are listening at novelfull.audio. Ads by Google equals window. Ads by Google. Push, late at night Yuku's settlement The Yuku clan was a small clan of the Yin Shang dynasty, which split from the royal family of the Shang dynasty hundreds of years ago. Decades ago, they migrated to Exian Lake to settle and cruelly slaughter the Exian people, using them to worship the heavenly emperor. A few years ago, they were frightened by the slaughter of the Zhou people and surrendered to King Wu, who conferred them the title of Viscount. During this period, most of the aristocrats who surrendered to the Shang dynasty were conferred the title of Viscount. Although they were conferred the title of Viscount by King Wu, they did not sincerely submit, but were waiting for the opportunity. Moreover, they always believed that King Lu of Yin, Wu Gung, was their king, and as for King Wu of Zhou, he was just a foreign ruler. Zhou Man invades and China falls. Drive out Zhou Lu and restore the great merchants. The leader of the Ku clan, Viscount, Kuzi, shouted such slogans and led over a hundred clan warriors south to participate in the war, assisting King Lu of Yin in restoring the merchants of Dei. Tonight, the Ku family has just finished their sacrificial activities. The priest led his tribe to worship the heavenly emperor, drank a bowl of human blood, and rested early. Due to the fact that the merchants of Dei were no longer the co-lords of the world and did not have any vassal clans to offer sacrifices, there was a shortage of offerings from the Ku clan. Therefore, they had to offer sacrifices to the fleeing Yin people from other Yin clans. The people of the Ku clan fell asleep, fantasizing about the recovery of the former glory of the Dei merchants. Countless vassal clans came to pay tribute to people and animals, bronze, salt, beauties, gemstones, and so on. The only few clan warriors are guarding outside the settlement. In this era, most clans did not have cities, they were just a simple settlement surrounded by a fence. Some clans don't even have fences, they just pile up hundreds of thatched cottages together, and there are thousands of people living there, which can be considered as feudal lords. Shu. A bone arrow shot down. Ah. Uh. A guardian of the Ku clan was shot in the throat and died on the spot. Xinghua is too poor to afford bronze arrows, and the only bronze is used to make weapons and household utensils. There are enemies. The other guard was shocked and quickly shouted. However, Xian on the chariot drew his bow again to shoot arrows. Shu. Another arrow shot, and the arrow made of fish bones hit the back of the guard's head. The blood red arrow drilled out of his mouth. Rumble. The chariot rushed into the Ku family settlement, which was only protected by a fence, and several other Yin soldiers followed closely behind, igniting fires everywhere in the settlement. Pop pop pop. The thatched cottage in the settlement was set on fire, burning fiercely. It's the arrival of the Zhou people. Wake up quickly. Wake up quickly. Damn Zhou people. Ah. Help me. Within the settlement, howls, sounds of battle, wake dot up calls, screams, and roars kept coming and going. The leader led the brave soldiers on a southern expedition, leaving only a few young adults in the settlement. The priests of the Ku clan rushed up, picked up weapons, and commanded the elderly, weak, women, and children to rise up and resist. Kill these Zhou people, the heavenly emperor will protect us in the heavenly realm, and we will surely be invincible in battle. The young and young girls of the Ku clan picked up long spears and wooden spears, gathered around the priests, and obeyed their commands. You barbarians, if you don't accept Wang Hua, you should be executed. Xian stabbed the spear in his hand into the chest of an elderly man from the rushing Yin family and sneered at the group of Yin people. The priest was disheveled, wearing a garland with several jadeite stones hanging from it. She held up her staff and encouraged the tribe, the heavenly emperor is watching us in the heavenly realm. There are warriors of the Ku clan, fight bravely. Shu. Xian pulled his bow and shot an arrow, killing a young man who was blocking the priest's body. The young girls and boys who stood in front of the priest couldn't bear it anymore and rushed forward voluntarily. They couldn't continue to be passively beaten like this. 
their formation has dispersed, charge. Upon discovering that the Ean people had voluntarily disbanded the spear formation, Xin directly instructed the soldiers to drive their chariots to charge. Bang! A Ean man was hit by the tremendous impact of the chariot and fell to the ground, vomiting blood. The other Ean people also retreated in fear and dared not stop the chariots from charging forward. I don't agree with Zhou. The Heavenly Emperor will eventually descend into the world. The priest cursed Xian and then committed suicide in grief and anger. After the war, Xinxing counted the spoils of war and seized a total of 52 young women, 26 young men, one bronze cauldron, 156 bags of corn, several bronze weapons, two bags of salt, 12 cows, 35 sheep, and 115 chickens and ducks. This expedition has yielded a rich harvest. With so much food, winter has become easier this year. These slaves can also open up more farmland for Exion country next year. According to tradition, Exion did not completely exterminate the Yuku clan, but let go of those who were too young and too old, and let them stay in the settlement to fend for themselves. Five new soldiers from the Yin dynasty who participated in the war each received a woman as a reward. I am willing to fight for the monarch and pledge my loyalty to you to the death. The five new soldiers of the Yin people were grateful to Exion, and everything they had was generously given to them by Exion. From now on, you are all from Exion, the people of our Exion country. Exion personally tied the hair and wore crowns for the five new soldiers of the Yin people. If it had been in the past, the Yin people were very averse to the Zhou people's hairstyles and crowns, believing that hairstyles were a barbarian custom. But now, those who tie their hair have become rulers, those who don't tie their hair have become rulers, and wearing a crown has become a symbol of integration into the ruling class. They actually love to tie their hair very much. In fact, people don't like to tie their hair or cut it, they just like a noble status. Find ZhaoZhuyuan.com, if the rulers of this world have broken their hair, they will consider it to be civilized and noble. If the rulers of this world tie their hair, they will consider it to be civilized and noble. If the rulers of this world wear braids, they will consider it to be civilized and noble. Xian had a gentle smile on her face as she looked at the overjoyed new recruits of the Yin people, thinking in her heart. He doesn't look down on anyone, whether it's from Zhou or Yin, whether it's the one with broken hair or the one with tied hair. For this old monster who has lived for over 2,000 years, there is no difference. He can mercilessly kill slaves who dare to flee, or he can let go of his noble status as a monarch and personally tie the hair and crown of several new recruits, and dress them. I won't sacrifice your people, and you won't be slaves all your life. As long as you work for me with peace of mind, help me cultivate wasteland, there is a chance to break free from slavery, become my subjects, and even rule the slaves with me. Xin spoke fluently in the Ku dialect, giving these captive slaves hope to survive. My lord is a once-in-a-lifetime holy ruler. Becoming a slave to you is a lifelong blessing and a blessing from the heavenly emperor. A Yin soldier said to his Yin compatriots, his words filled with arrogance, and he occasionally stroked his own bundle of hair, which was a symbol of civilized people. Now, he is no longer from Yin, but from Xian, a noble and civilized Xian. The slaves looked at Xian in terror, but when they saw the soldiers who were also from the Yin dynasty, they felt a sense of peace in their hearts, thinking that they could never do anything like this. When the Yin people rebelled, Xinzi couldn't bear to add swords and was influenced by benevolence and righteousness. The name of Renjun has been renowned for generations, records of the grand historian Xian family. Chapter 6 Gentlemen You are listening at NovelFull.audio Ads by Google equals window Ads by Google Push, in the year 2028, Xian Autumn, wow, wow Accompanied by the sound of crying, a baby boy was born The hidden dragon is in the abyss, my child You are the hidden dragon of our Xian family, and one day you will be able to soar for nine days. With expectations for her eldest son, 
Xian named her eldest son, Xian Longyuan. Xian Longyuan is the eldest son of the monarch of Xian state, and therefore he is also known as the gentleman or Xian gentleman by the people of the country, which literally means heir of the ruler's son. In the past few months, there have been no major events in the state of Xian. The people took turns following Xian to the mountains and forests to hunt, and took turns stationed on the mountains to supervise the slaves in reclaiming land. Our food is limited, and capturing too many slaves at once is not enough to keep them alive. At that time, we can only consume them through sacrificial rituals like in the Shang dynasty. Xian decides whether to capture slaves and how many slaves to capture based on the food she stores. On the premise of ensuring that the slaves will not starve to death, there must be a balance left, just in case. The more food we produce, the more slaves we can feed. The more slaves we feed, the more farmland we can cultivate. The more farmland we cultivate, the more food we can produce. This is a virtuous cycle. Your Majesty, the envoy from Loi has arrived. While Xian was still thinking about how to cultivate his eldest son, Xian Renling, Yin Nuling, respectfully came to report. Loi. Who's the messenger of their family? Xian is not familiar with this period of history, he only has over 2,000 years of rich experience. The various humanistic knowledge that travelers must possess is completely unfamiliar to them. At most, they can memorize a list of dynasties, and as for various scientific and technological knowledge, they only know one name. Did Wang Shudan pacify the three supervisors, or did the three supervisors pacify Wang Shudan? Or perhaps King Lu of Yin became the winner? Whether it is the victory of Wang Shudan or the victory of Sanjian, there is not much difference for Xinghua. But if it was the victory of King Lu of Yin, Wu Gong, then the state of Xian would have to flee throughout the country. King Lu of Yin would never forgive Xian Guo for capturing the Yin people as slaves. In no time, a dusty envoy came in. The envoy looked tired, and his silk clothes were also covered in soil. After the usurper was defeated and fled to the west, our lord, Hu Xu, assisted the heavenly king, King Qing of Zhou, and Xinan sent envoys to pay tribute to salt for military supplies. As soon as the envoy arrived, he requested that the state of Xian pay tribute to the royal family with soil and salt, but the place where the tribute was paid was Yen, not Loi. Did the third supervisor win? Xian looked at the envoy who came from afar with half a doubt in her heart. The late king has already exempted our state of Xian from paying tribute for thirty years. Moreover, even if we need to temporarily increase salt tribute, we should still be paying tribute to Lui. Why do we need to pay tribute to other places? This does not comply with the rules established by the late king. Xian raised her own doubts. In order to establish his rule over the world, King Wu Jifa built a city in the Luo River and demanded that all the lords of the world deliver tribute to the city. Finally, these tribute items sent to Luoyi will be escorted by the Zhou royal army to the capital of the Zhou people, Haojing. I am only responsible for conveying orders from the royal family. Whether Xinan is willing to believe them or not is your own choice. The envoy mustered up courage and said, however, if it delays the tribute and angers the heavenly king, I cannot guarantee the consequences. After the envoy conveyed the order, he did not stop and continued to the next vassal state, persuading other vassals to pay tribute to the land. Your Majesty, are you going to tribute all our salt to me? If it's not enough, are you going to launch a temporary campaign against the Yuku clan to seize their salt? Xian Renling was eager to try, and he was eager to attack the Yuku clan. Although the Ku clan suffered heavy losses during Xian's last expedition, they were not exterminated. They built a new home on the ruins and built a circle of earth walls in the new home. The earth walls of this era are very rough. Mixing the soil and river water, and then adding some firewood, platycodon, etc. inside, can be used to build the walls. Then you can take a car, bring five bags of salt, go to the land to pay tribute to the salt, and come back with some bronze. 
whether it's true or false, just in case, XIN still decided to pay tribute to the land. Tribute was not only an act of loyalty by the feudal lords to the Zhou royal family, but also a form of commercial trade. When the envoys of the feudal lords gather together to offer tribute to the royal family, the royal family will also give some bronze, salt, books, slaves, food, and so on as gifts. For princes lacking copper, the royal family will give back bronze, for princes lacking salt, the royal family will give back salt, for princes lacking grain, the royal family will give back grain. During this period, the power of the feudal lords was very weak, and their relationship with the Zhou emperor was not simply hierarchical, but rather mutual assistance. The royal family needed feudal lords to suppress the remnants of the Yin Shang dynasty and other clans who did not submit to the Zhou dynasty in all directions of the world, and the feudal lords also needed the royal family to provide necessary protection for themselves. Those barbarians, even if they didn't look up to the feudal lords who were in theft on their land, dared not openly expel them under the intimidation of the 8th Division of Qingzhou. A few more months have passed, and the antelope fled back to Exian country in embarrassment. We were deceived. The envoy was a fraud, sent by the king of Shang, King Lu of Yin, to deceive the feudal lords into paying tribute to the land. The antelope brought back news from the sea. Wang Shudan was unstoppable and defeated the third supervisor and Yin Wanglu. King Lu of Yin, Wu Gung, was not willing to fail, so he sent fake envoys to various feudal states to deceive tribute and prepare military supplies for himself. The tribute was not delivered to the Ji Zhou royal family. Instead, it was delivered to the Yin Shang royal family through the Shuyuan website www.zhaozhuyuan.com. After Wang Shudan conquered Chaoga, he slaughtered Chaoga and washed away the old and young people of the Yin people who were struggling in the corner. Subsequently, the land north of Chaoga became chaotic, with some surrendering to Wang Shudan, some wanting to burn jade and stone, and some wanting to flee further north, but more people just wanted to take advantage of the chaos to satisfy their desires. Being cheated out of five bags of salt as a tribute by King Lu of Yin, Wu Gung, was just a small incident, and Xian didn't care. He is more concerned about the news of the large dot scale escape of the Yin people to the north. They should have gone to search for the dustpan. Xian quickly made a judgment. A few years ago, King Wu asked Jizi many questions, mainly about whether the remnants of the Yin Shang dynasty were willing to settle down and do some things for the subjects of the Ji Zhou dynasty. Jizi's answer was very gentle just asking King Wu to treat the descendants of the Yin Shang well. As long as King Wu treats the descendants of the Yin Shang well, the Yin people will naturally be willing to be the subjects of Ji Zhou. However, Jiang Zia believed that if the roots were not eradicated, there would inevitably be future troubles. He proposed to King Wu to exterminate all the surrendered Yin people, completely exterminate the Yin merchants, and fundamentally eliminate the hidden dangers. The vague attitude of King Wu towards the Yin people made Jizi afraid. He left without warning and fled north with his own tribe. Since it's a fugitive, I won't carry too many weapons. Instead, I'll carry my family in many daily necessities. Perhaps we can seize the opportunity to conquer them. Xian has a plan, which is to rob the Yin refugees who are fleeing north. If the captured slaves are not needed by oneself, they can also be sold to other feudal lords who need slaves in exchange for some food, livestock, bronze, craftsmen, and so on. The Yin people rebelled again, and Xinzi followed the king's orders to attack them, records of the grand historian Xian family. Chapter 7 Chiming You are listening at NovelFull.audio Ads by Google equals window Ads by Google Push Jizhou Woi when Dayu delineated the nine provinces, he named the area where the river flowed northward as Jizhou. At this time, the river water flows northward after exiting from the east of Loi, and only flows into the sea south of the Yen Kingdom. This place is filled with muddy swamps, lakes everywhere, and fertile fields for thousands of miles. Countless Yin people fled in groups towards the northern land of Qi, 
even planning to go further north than the land of Qi to search for Ji. Clatter, the sound of bells rang, and the nobles of the Yin Shang dynasty, dressed in silk and satin, rang their bells, shedding tears of sadness. Heavenly Emperor, have you abandoned us? Your descendants in the mortal world are being slaughtered by the people of the western land's small country. Please lower your divine punishment and save the land of Shang. Even when fleeing, some aristocrats of the Yin Shang dynasty did not forget to bring their musical instruments and other identity symbols. In the crowd, two children looked around and were held by two noblewomen. Two princes, the future of our Shang dynasty is in your hands. These two children are the two sons of King Lu of Yin. Yin Wanlu was intercepted by the army of Qi, Waiziki, on his escape route, and only two children fled Chaoga under the protection of a few nobles. At first, when Wei Ziki and other nobles of the Shang dynasty colluded with the Zhou people, they only hoped that the Zhou people would help them kill the heinous tyrant, Emperor Xian. In their minds, the Zhou people were just servants of the Yin Shang, they had invited foreign aid to help them eliminate the tyrant. Once eradicated, they should return to the western land to continue serving as vassals of the Yin Shang, and they would choose an obedient son of the Yin Shang royal family to become the new Yin king. In the original plan, nothing would change, it was just a simple eradication of a tyrant, Emperor Xian. Who would know that although the people of the western Zhou dynasty helped them eliminate Emperor Xian, they were unwilling to continue serving as vassals of the Yin Shang dynasty and even wanted to replace him. Originally, the nobles of the Yin Shang dynasty and the Zhou people had a common enemy, Emperor Xian, so they could still cooperate friendly with each other. Now, without a common enemy, they can no longer coexist. In the autumn when the state of the Shang dynasty was in crisis, some nobles chose to flee, such as Jizi, while others chose to fight to the end, such as those who were slaughtered by Zhou Gongdan in Chaoga city. But there was one person who chose to continue working with Zhou people, and that was Waiziki. Qi will be punished by the heavenly emperor. His descendants are only servants of the Zhou people. The sunset sets in the west, and the red glow of the sky stains the earth. Kill. Hundreds of tanks came from the west, with various flags, some even without flags. It's the Dianhou who were in theft to this area by the Zhou people. Hurry up. Run. The Yin people were indifferent to the various belongings on the car, and some even abandoned their children and fled eastward with all their might. During this period, the Sodat called feudal lords, or Jian lords, were only hereditary military commanders planted by the Zhou royal family in various important areas. Some of them have only a few dozen soldiers, some have only a few hundred civilians, and some even have only a few soldiers, with no civilians at all. The Duke of Jian, who could have a thousand soldiers, was already a power highly valued by the Zhou royal family. If you want territory, grab it by yourself, if you want population slaves, grab it by yourself, if you want bronze and salt, grab it by yourself. The Zhou royal family only provided necessary military protection and commercial trade channels, and the rest could only rely on the self-reliance of the feudal lords. Xian knew he couldn't eat so many Yin refugees, so he shared this idea with more than a dozen vassals around him and worked with them to divide up these Yin refugees. There were originally over twenty feudal lords who were in theft in this area, but in just a few years, six of them have been exterminated by the local remnants of the Yin Shang dynasty. Chase those who ring the bell, and the others will naturally collapse without fighting. Xian was elected as the temporary commander of the feudal alliance, leading over five hundred soldiers to pursue and kill Zhong Mingren. Protect the prince. Due to the large number of family members on the carriage, the nobles of the Shang dynasty were quickly caught up with. They took the initiative to get off the car and let their families continue their escape with the two princes. These nobles of the Yin Shang dynasty held bronze short swords in the sunset, hoping to block the charging of chariots, like a group of praying mantis trying to block the rolling wheels. The praying mantis arm is like a cart, beyond measure. Xian commanded the chariot to charge forward towards the Yin Shang nobles who fought to the end. Hundreds of years ago, 
merchants galloped on the land of the central plains with their unique chariots, defeating the famous Xia Ho clan for their expertise in archery, replacing them and becoming the new ruler of the world. Nowadays, the Zhou people have promoted the unique chariots created by merchants, built more and more powerful chariot armies, and defeated them with the most proud chariot techniques of merchants. Hiss, Puff Before they could resist with their bronze short swords, they were pierced in the chest by the Zhou soldiers on the chariot with long spears. I don't want to die, I don't want to die. My music hasn't been fully composed yet, and I can't leave any regrets in it. The nobleman of the Yin Shang who just struck the chime bell, after his passion dissipated, looked at his deceased companion and had already given up resistance. He knelt on the ground, looking at Xian on the chariot with a humble pleading gaze. A noble conqueror from the western land, please forgive me. I am a musician who knows how to play musical instruments, and your country definitely needs talents like me. Xian looked at the chimes he was holding in his arms and couldn't help but chuckle as he approached Shuyuan www.zhaoshuyuan.com, saying, I've heard that you've always had a strong aversion to King Zhou's love for lewd music. Now, you've actually developed a love for lewd music yourself. Lust refers to music that does not conform to the rules and principles of the Yin and Shang ancestors. During King Zhou's lifetime, he loved the music of the Dongyi people, neglected and even despised the music of the Yin Shang dynasty. This behavior of liking foreign cultures and rejecting local cultures caused collective dissatisfaction among the nobles. Music is music, there is no such thing as lewd music. After kneeling on the ground, the nobles of the Shang dynasty would ring the bell and play music for Xian on the spot. There are very few talents who understand musical instruments, and instrument production is extremely complex. It is very difficult for ordinary people to hear music. He was pleased to see that this nobleman of the Yin Shang dynasty was indeed extremely fond of pleasure, even the lewd pleasure that was sneered at by other nobles of the Yin Shang dynasty. King Zhou was a derogatory remark made by the Zhou people towards Emperor Xian, but this nobleman of the Yin Shang dynasty did not care about Xian's behavior of belittling their ancestors in front of him. I can forgive you and invite you to become a musician in our country, how about that? Xian has decided to recruit this talent, and in the future, whether it is to receive envoys from other feudal lords or envoys from the Zhou Emperor, they will have a more dignified appearance, so as not to appear crude and unbearable to Xian. Sometimes, face is the inside, and the inside is face. Only when you have face can others appreciate you and are willing to cooperate with you can you have a chance to get inside. Xian does not care about the secular concept of honor and disgrace, but this does not mean that he rejects the secular concept of honor and disgrace. On the contrary, he will actively integrate into the secular concept to make himself feel like a fish in water. In the spring of the second year of King Cheng of Zhou, Xinzi led sixteen feudal lords to attack Hebei. In March, he pacified the rebellion of Yin and captured Luzi. Records of the Grand Historian Xian Family Chapter 8 Wei Jun You are listening at NovelFull.audio Ads by Google equals window Ads by Google Push, Winter of 2029 The war between Wang Shudan and the remnants of the Yin Shang dynasty is still ongoing, and many Fang states that rebelled with Yin Wanglu have been annihilated. Wang Shudan would enfef the descendants of the royal family or meritorious officials to govern these annihilated kingdoms in the local area. And Xingua has also reached the population limit. The population that could be accommodated on the mountain was very small, and the increase in slaves forced Xian to move to the foot of the mountain to live. In the war over half a year ago, the feudal lords of western Hebei captured more than 3,000 prisoners, of which Xian Guo received 200 prisoners, most of whom were young and middle-aged laborers. In order to manage these new slaves, Xian once again selected 10 people from the previous batch of Yin slaves who were more active in their daily work and made them become Chinese. You are not slaves for eternity. As long as you remain loyal to me and fight for me, one day you will be able to regain your freedom and become the citizens of Xian country. Xian summoned all the slaves and citizens at the foot of the mountain, 
and in front of everyone, bestowed upon the ten Yin slaves the identity of Xian citizens. Not only that, Ling was also rewarded with a woman and two slaves for his meritorious service in driving the chariot. The location of Sini is a standard mountain south and water north, so Sini can also be called Xinyang. To the north of Sini is the mountains and forests, Xinshan, that Xian Gua had previously settled in, to the south is Xinhu Lake, to the west is only a winding path leading to the salt pond, and to the east is a large swamp. Ling, I'll leave the construction of Sini to you for supervision. Yes. Xian drew a rough plan of Sini on the sandy land, including the monarch's mansion, the thatched houses of the Chinese people, fishing grounds, livestock enclosure areas, slave settlements, and corn planting areas. Livestock enclosure is located near the millet planting area, facilitating the composting of livestock manure. The monarch and slaves are separated from the residential area of the Chinese people to prevent sudden rebellions by the slaves. Moreover, the monarch's mansion is located near the mountain. In case the situation is not right, the monarch of Xian country can escape to the mountain for refuge in a timely manner. In addition, in the planning, bamboo tubes will also be used to draw mountain spring water from the mountains for the people of Xian to drink. Normally, irrigation of farmland is done using the water from the nearby lake, but the lake water is too dirty and not suitable for direct drinking. On the winding path to the west, a soil wall will also be built and a watchtower will be built to prevent sudden enemy invasion. After completing the task, Xian took several Chinese people and drove three ox carts, carrying a large amount of salt to the wasteland. The majority of the remnants of the Yin Shang dynasty in this area have been slaughtered, and Wang Shudan has reconferred many feudal lords here, such as Uncle Wei Kang. Uncle Wei Kang's original fiefdom was in Kong, but due to his contributions in suppressing the rebellion, he was re enfeft in a more prosperous Chaoga and became the ruler of the state of Wei. Due to the destruction caused by war, the production order has collapsed, and various daily necessities are severely lacking requiring a large amount of imported materials from the outside world. The purpose of Xian's trip is to go to various countries in the underworld, mainly the Wei Kingdom, to exchange the soil and salt they needed for bronze and the craftsmen of the Yin people. Xian Gua needs to master his own bronze technology. It would be best if he could buy some Yin craftsmen, slaves who knew how to smelt copper during this trip. Even if he couldn't buy them, he would have to exchange them for some copper farming tools and weapons. Three months later Chauga Marquises from all over the world came to exchange goods with carts full of goods, including those loaded with copper ore, those loaded with soil and salt, and those loaded with corn. The city was in a state of disrepair, and Wei Kangshu's people from the Wei Kingdom were whipping the slaves of the Yin people with whips, asking them to rebuild the city and repair the civilian buildings and facilities inside the city. The trade during this period was very simple. The lords of various countries gave their goods as gifts to the state of Wei, and then the state of Wei gave back some gifts to the lords. Wei state obtained copper mines from the southern feudal lords and returned them to Xian state. Xian State gifted Wei State three chariots of earth salt, and then Wei State returned these three chariots of earth salt to the southern feudal lords who brought the copper mines. During this process, Wei Guo would retain some goods as profits, and a commercial trade would be completed through gifts and rebates. The feudal lords from Luoyi and Zhouyuan in the capital needed silk, beautiful women, and exquisite gemstones the most. The vassals from the south needed salt and slaves the most. And the feudal lords from the north urgently needed bronze weapons because their fiefdoms were located in the habitats of the remnants of the Yin Shang dynasty, and they lived in a crisis of national downfall every day. Please inform Lord Wei that Xian Guo wants some skilled craftsmen who know how to smelt copper. Can these three carts of salt be exchanged for a few craftsmen? Xian respectfully asked the people of Weigua who came to inspect the gifts. Hmm. The person from the state of Wei nodded and reported this matter to Uncle Wei Kong. In Wei Jun's mansion, Uncle Wei Kong was listening to various reports of information from the Chinese people. Including the reconstruction of the city, the movements of the descendants of the Yin people, 
the political situation of Loi, gifts from feudal lords, the birth, aging, illness, and death of the Chinese people, and so on. Xian Guo Upon hearing the request from the Chinese people, Uncle Wei Kong tried to recall the information about Xian Guo. He was the slave who captured and killed King Zhou in the past, and was conferred the title of Xinnan by King Wu. He has been guarding the Xindi Salt Pond for generations, a Chinese official reminded on the side. Hmm. Uncle Wei Kong finally remembered some things about the small country of Xian and said with a smile, this Xian man is the person who organized the alliance of the feudal lords in western Hebei to conquer the Yin people who fled to rebel forces more than half a year ago. Yes, the Chinese replied. Uncle Wei Kong seemed to appreciate Xian, whom he had never met before. He slowly arrived. Xian Guo's strength is weak, and Xian Nan developed under the encirclement of Yin Yi. It was not easy for me, Ji Zhou, to eradicate rebellion and find the Shuyuan website www.jiaoshuyuan.com. We should indeed help him more. We are all subjects of the Heavenly King, and we should help each other, suppress Yin Yi together, and guard against the barbarians around us. I have agreed to his request. You can choose ten from the craftsmen and give them all to the Xian man. Uncle Wei Kong generously gifted Xian ten craftsmen and wanted to personally meet Xian. In the afternoon of that day, Xian, I have met Lord Wei. Xian arrived as promised and met Uncle Wei Kong on the riverbank outside the city. Let's sit together, Xian Nan, and go fishing with me. Uncle Wei Kong sat on a stone by the river, holding a fishing rod and enjoying himself fishing. It is said that the Xian clan was once one of the top ten ancient clans, with an average status compared to the Xia Ho clan, Gong Gong clan, and other clans. As a descendant of the ancient ten clans, Xian Nan became a slave to the Yin people, and it is no wonder that the Yin Shang society was destroyed. This is a punishment from heaven for their tyranny against the remnants of the previous dynasty. The late king learned from the lessons of the Yin Shang dynasty, treated the elderly and young of the previous dynasty's clans kindly, granted them three dukes' titles, and even allowed them to proclaim themselves kings. However, they are still not satisfied and have rebelled. It's really despicable. When Uncle Wei Kong said this, he trembled with anger. Many feudal lords of the Ji Zhou dynasty were very angry about the collusion of the remnants of the Yin Shang dynasty with the three supervisors in rebellion. They believed that the Zhou people had already treated the old and young remnants of the previous dynasty well, but still could not make these old and young remnants of the Yin Shang willing to become subjects of the Ji Zhou dynasty. Wei Jun's words are reasonable. The downfall of the Yin Shang dynasty today was simply caused by his own actions, Xian nodded and agreed with Uncle Wei Kang's words. This is the younger brother of King Wu. If we can please him, the good days of Xian kingdom will come. Uncle Wei Kang asked the reason for the downfall of Yin, and Confucius said. The blame comes from oneself. Records of the Grand Historian Xian Family Chapter 9. Cine. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Ads by Google equals window. Ads by Google. Push, in the summer of the year 2030, Xian Wang Shudan's army has been chasing the Yen Di in the east, cooperating with Jiang Zia's army stationed on the coast of the East China Sea, to carry out the final encirclement and suppression of the Yin people who fled to the east. In this military expedition to the frontier, Wang Shudan not only withdrew the Qingzhou 8th Division from Lui, but also withdrew the Yin Shang 8th Division. The so dot called Yin Shang 8th Division refers to the integration of the voluntarily surrendered Yin Shang clan by the Zhou royal family into a servant army, assisting the Zhou people's army in various battles, mainly to suppress the remnants of the Yin Shang. Countless Yin people became slaves, and if they were captured by the Zhou people, they would still be lucky. They would be rewarded by the Zhou Emperor to the feudal lords who assisted in the battle and became their servants. If one were to become a slave to the noble families of the eight masters of the Yin and Shang dynasties, it is highly likely that they would be sacrificed, 
without even the qualification to be a cow or a horse. In this expedition to the frontier, the feudal lords of western Hebei were also conscripted. Xinqin brought ten soldiers to Wang Shudan's army to assist him in the expedition against the Yin people in the east. In the process of this eastern expedition, the Zhou people destroyed countless countries, tribes, and sealed new feudal lords on the ruins of the war, allowing these lords to suppress the remaining remnants of the Yin Shang people in the area. Xian was rewarded with 300 slaves for his bravery in battle, and was personally received by Wang Shudan. The power of the Yin people is still strong, and there are still many clans in the north who do not obey the Zhou dynasty. Our original plan was to continue the northern expedition and completely eliminate all the resistance of the Yin people's country. However, the soldiers have been fighting outside for years, and they are eager to go home to visit their parents, wives, and children. I cannot force the northern expedition without considering their practical needs, so the stability of the northern region of the great Zhou dynasty can only rely on you. Before withdrawing his troops, Wang Shudan summoned a group of northern lords to deliver a speech to the lords, and relocated some of the feudal lords in the capital region who were closely related to the Zhou royal family to the north, constantly monitoring the remnants of the Yin people in the north. Wang Shudan returned to Luoyi with his army, and the feudal lords were also satisfied with the war's harvest and returned to their fiefdoms. Two months later Autumn Xinghua, e, a village is under construction, and slaves are digging drainage channels to drain the water from the swamp and cultivate alternating high and low acres. In this era, there was no intensive cultivation. In many areas, agriculture was nothing more than planting a piece of land without fertility, and then replacing it with a new piece of land to reclaim farmland. When the new farmland also loses its fertility, the entire clan continues to migrate in search of new arable land, which is known as nomadic farming. Some areas with higher levels of development, such as the Yin capital, Chaoga, Loi, Haojing, etc., have begun to adopt more advanced rotary tillage systems. That is to say, three pieces of land are cultivated alternately, and when one piece of land is cultivated, the other two pieces of land are fallow. Restore the fertility of the land, making settled farming possible, without the need for collective migration of the entire clan, country, every few years as before. And Xian specifically created the method of cultivating acres for his own Xian country, which is a re-creation based on the rotation tillage system. That is to say, on the same piece of land, rotating cultivation is carried out based on the height of the farmland. The advantage of doing so is that the drainage channels can be reused, without the need to rebuild the drainage channels every time the farmland is changed like traditional rotating cultivation. The young girl Inying held her and Xian's child and stood at the entrance of the village, gazing at the crowd outside the village. Ying is the new name Xian gave her, and she has now accepted her fate to be Xian's woman and cultivate a gentleman for Xian. Behind her, Ling and several soldiers knelt down on one knee, respectfully welcoming Xian who was returning home. Long, long, long. Three tanks drove over, followed by dozens of ox carts filled with slaves. Congratulations to the monarch. The antelope shouted towards Xian's position, with respect and loyalty on its face. I have seen the monarch. Ng hugged the child and actively leaned towards Xian. Mmm. Xian gently stroked Ying Ying's hair. The girl in front of him had no emotions, he only existed as a tool to continue the incense, but this did not hinder his concern for the girl. Ling, please report on the work of the slaves during these days. I have decided to select five more slaves to be promoted to the rank of national. With the arrival of a new batch of slaves, the existing number of Chinese people was no longer able to suppress more and more slaves. Therefore, it was necessary to promote multiple slaves to become new Chinese people, and let these slaves become Chinese people to assist Xian Guo in suppressing other slaves together. Nowadays, there are a total of 26 people and 535 slaves in the state of Xian. In no time, except for the few foreigners who were supervising the slave work, all the others had already arrived. 
discussing politics with the Chinese people is a characteristic of the feudal states of this era. The monarch's own power is limited, so it has become a consensus among most feudal lords to win over the people and let them assist him in suppressing slaves internally and guarding against barbarians externally. I hereby report to the ruler that five sheep have recently gone missing and I am currently investigating. The shepherd responsible for guarding the livestock truthfully reported that he was originally a slave of the Yin people. Later, due to his efforts in land reclamation and meritorious service, he was promoted to a citizen and appointed by Xian as the shepherd, specifically responsible for the livestock enclosure in Xian country. I would like to inform the monarch that in slave settlements, male slaves often force female slaves in the middle of the night, making it increasingly difficult for them to control. I believe that laws should be enacted to punish those who commit crimes. After all, female slaves are also the national property of our country, and their persecution is equivalent to the destruction of the country's property. Of course, if male and female slaves could live separately and be divided into different genders' residences, it would be easier to manage them by looking for a book garden at www.chaoshuyuan.com. Not only that, it is also necessary to build prisons for temporary detention of offenders to prevent them from committing crimes again. The person who said this was the situ, who was specifically responsible for the management of slave personnel. He also came from a slave background in the Yin dynasty and was promoted to a national due to his meritorious service in assisting Xian in chasing fugitive slaves. He was also appointed as the situ of Xian country. The construction of the drainage channel was not smooth, and there were many fleeing descendants of the Yin people lurking in the mountains. Whenever our drainage channel was just halfway built, they would secretly destroy it. We didn't have enough manpower to guard the slaves, so we couldn't spare any manpower to go to the mountains and eliminate the barbarians of the Yin people. The person who said this was the Si Nong, who was specifically responsible for the construction of agricultural water conservancy facilities and agricultural management. He was once a Chang slave and was rewarded to Xian by King Wu Jifa. Over the years, he followed Xian's campaigns in the south and north, and can also be considered an old citizen of Xian. In addition to the conflict between the Chinese people and slaves, the conflict between Xian state and Yin Yi, there are also internal conflicts between the Chinese people. A Chinese man publicly cried to Xian, saying that his beloved girl had been abused and killed by another Chinese man. That woman is just a slave of the Yin people. You can play, why can't I play? Another accused Chinese person also expressed dissatisfaction and didn't feel like he had done anything wrong. One feels that their beloved woman has been harmed, while the other feels that what they have harmed is just a slave of the Yin people, which is not worth mentioning. Above the main seat, Xian closed her eyes and listened to the reports of work from the Chinese people. He did not stop the argument between the two Chinese people over a female slave of the Yin people, but only gave a respectful look to the standing antelope on the side. Ling understood the meaning and shouted to the two Chinese people in the argument. Silence. Chapter 10. Copper Cauldron Method. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Ads by Google equals window. Ads by Google. Push, winter of the year 2030 after more than a year, the production of 12 bronze cauldrons has been completed. In order to gather enough copper materials, Xian had to sell a portion of the slaves to other neighboring vassal states in exchange for copper ore. Twelve bronze cauldrons stand in front of the monarch's mansion, inscribed with many legal provisions. Originally, Xian only intended to engrave the law, but Wang Shudan recently promulgated the Zhou ritual, allowing the feudal lords of the world to follow it conditionally according to the actual situation. The conditional implementation of this mainly depends on the difficulty of implementing the Zhou ritual. In areas such as Zongzhou and Qingzhou, the Zhou ritual was thoroughly promoted. However, for vassal states like Qi, which were surrounded by barbarians, it was necessary to combine the content of Zhou ritual with local cultural customs to avoid forcibly promoting Zhou ritual and triggering local indigenous rebellions. The promulgation of the Zhou ritual tightly united the feudal lords around the Zhou royal family, 
forming a relatively stable order. On the front of the twelve bronze cauldrons is the criminal law of Xi'an state, while on the back is the content of the Zhou ritual promulgated by Wang Shudan. The content of the criminal law includes the punishment for slaves killing slaves, the punishment for Chinese people killing slaves, the punishment for Chinese people killing slaves, the punishment for slaves killing slaves, theft, adultery, alcoholism, destruction of national property, destruction of private property, trading, and so on. Chinese people killed state slaves without permission, and were fined copper or cloth for the first time, followed by whipping for the second time. If a citizen kills a private slave of another citizen without authorization, they shall compensate the other party with double the equivalent of a slave. For example, if a citizen kills two young female slaves of the other party, they shall compensate the other party with two young female slaves. If a citizen kills another citizen, they will be stripped of their identity and demoted to a state slave. If a slave commits the crime of killing a citizen, he shall be directly sentenced to death. If a state slave kills a state slave, it shall be punished with whipping. If a state slave kills a private slave, the monarch shall compensate the owner, citizen, of the killed private slave. If private slaves kill state slaves, their owners shall compensate the state, including slaves, copper, cloth, food, and so on. If a private slave kills a private slave, the owner of the slave shall provide double equivalent compensation to the owner of the slain slave. Your Majesty, it's time to go to Luoyang for further studies. The temple attendant reminded that this temple attendant was a young girl selected by Xian from the slaves, specifically responsible for serving him and his wife, children, and children. In order to promote the Zhou ritual, Wang Shudan requested the feudal lords to learn the etiquette when they went to Luoyang or Haojing to pay tribute. After the feudal lords returned to their fiefdoms, they would spread the Zhou ritual to their own people. Three months later Luoyi, Xian, Prince Mao of the state of Wei pays his respects. Xian, Duke of Qi. Xian, Prince Kongguo. Xian, the ruler of Exian Kingdom. Most feudal lords, busy suppressing the barbarians on their fiefdoms, who were not obedient to the local indigenous people of Zhou, did not have time to personally come to pay tribute and learn Zhou rituals, and could only send their own sons to come. Xian's eldest son, Long Yuan, was still in his infancy, so he could only come personally to pay tribute and learn the Zhou ritual. The two capital system implemented by the Zhou people, Luoyi and Haojing, were both capital cities. However, due to Wang Shudan's rule in Luoyi, currently, in most cases, tribute is paid to go to Luoyi. Kong and Wei were the right dot hand men of the Zhou royal family in suppressing Yin Yi. Kong provided food and forage for the eight masters of Yin, while Wei temporarily took over as the emperor of Zhou and directly commanded the eight masters of Yin to conquer clans that did not submit to Zhou. In earlier years, I heard that Xin Nan had captured and killed King Zhou in Chaoga. Today, upon seeing him, he is truly heroic and valiant. In private, Emperor Zhou, King Cheng of Zhou, personally summoned Xian and hoped that Xian could stay in Luoyi for a while to teach him martial arts. It has been four years since Xian captured and killed King Zhou, and Xian has just turned twenty, which is the age of youth. During this period in Luoyi, many royal women expressed their love to Xian, and some feudal lords also proposed a marriage alliance with Xian, hoping to marry their daughters to Xian. Xian's appearance has always been very attractive to women, otherwise Daji wouldn't have let Xian become a villain specifically serving her. After several happy moments, the young girl Ying quickly accepted the fact that she was a woman of Xian and was grateful that her master was handsome Xian, rather than other Zhou nobles. However, not all the lords had a favorable impression of Xian. Among the many lords present who came to study Zhou Li, Su Gui, the ruler of the state of Su, became very hostile towards Xian. He is Daji's younger brother, who recently ascended to the throne as the ruler of the state of Su. I have always held a grudge against Xian Shun for killing Daji. Is a small slave of the Yin Shang dynasty also worthy of my rank here? The ruler of the state of Su mocked Xian, recounting his past of being a slave to King Zhou. 
Ah, if I were a small slave of the Yin Shang dynasty, then you would be a relative of King Zhou. For such blatant provocation, Exian must fight back, otherwise it will only make other feudal lords feel weak and deceitful, and any feudal lord who comes will dare to bully Exian. My sister was forced to become a concubine for King Zhou, and our state of Su and the people of Yin are at odds. Su Yen roared loudly. That's best. I don't want to see the Yin people holding weapons from your Su country in future battles with the Yin people, Xian said, suppressing Su's momentum with righteousness. Eliminating the barbarians of the Yin dynasty who did not submit to the Zhou dynasty was politically correct in the great Zhou dynasty, and no one dared to publicly declare their support for the Yin merchants who did not submit to the Zhou dynasty. As for the Song dynasty just established by Waiziki, they were the Yin people who worked as dogs for the Zhou people, unlike the Yin people who did not obey the Zhou. Another month has passed the study of Zhou Li in Luoyi was completed, and Wang Shudan assigned the feudal lords a task of spreading Zhou Li to his own fiefdoms, so that the people on the fiefdoms could also learn Zhou Li. Not only that, before the feudal lords left, Wang Shudan did not forget to remind them. In the late Shang dynasty, natural disasters continued, and grain harvests often went out. In this situation, the nobles of the Shang dynasty still did not forget to drink excessively, wasting a large amount of food to make fine wine. As for the slaves who could not eat enough, they would directly sacrifice and consume them. They would rather sacrifice and consume the slaves than drink less, which is an important reason for their extravagance and destruction. After you go back, you should maintain the traditional virtue of diligence, thrift, and thrift of our Ji Zhou dynasty. Fine wine can be enjoyed occasionally, but do not drink excessively, and they should not delay the development of their country for the sake of fine wine. Not only did Wang Shudan advise the feudal lords not to drink excessively, but he also implemented the prohibition of alcohol in Luoyi and Zhongzhou. Once it was discovered that Chinese people were drinking excessively, fines would be imposed. If the situation was serious, even the status of Chinese people would be revoked. For the burial of Zhou nobles, Wang Shudan also demanded a reduction in human sacrifice and a reduction in burial objects such as wine vessels. Before the death of King Zhou of Shang, he once wanted to ban obscene worship and monopolized the power of worship. Only as the king of Shang was he qualified to communicate with the heavenly emperor, and other virtuous people, priests, and feudal lords were not allowed to communicate with the heavenly emperor through worship. The so dot called obscene worship refers to irregular worship. In the eyes of King Zhou of Shang, any worship without his consent is considered obscene worship, and only he can communicate with the gods. Any unauthorized communication with the gods by others must be severely punished. King Zhou of Shang did not oppose ghosts and gods. He only opposed communicating with others about ghosts and gods. He did not oppose live sacrifice, he only opposed others engaging in live sacrifice. King Wu Jifa promised to grant them the freedom of living people to worship in order to win over these virtuous people and feudal lords who had lost their right to worship. Even King Wu Jifa himself, while conquering Chaoga, couldn't help but hold a grand live sacrifice ceremony to celebrate his military victory. Therefore, in recent years, the worship of living people in all corners of the world was even more severe than during the Yin and Shang dynasties. The feudal lords who had finally regained the right to worship crazily communicated with the gods, heavenly emperor, through the worship of living people. Even some feudal lords sacrificed all the living slaves that had not been worshipped in the past few decades within a year, infuriating them by offering sacrifices to thousands of slaves. And his only purpose in doing so was to have a reputation in front of other feudal lords, to show off to them that he had many slaves, to show off his wealth and wealth, and to show off that he was sufficiently devout to the heavenly emperor, deity. Now, Wang Shudan has decided to curb the bad customs of the old dynasty, abolish the worship of living people, only retain relatively civilized people for sacrifice, and reduce the scale of human sacrifice. He also stipulated the scale of human sacrifice for the emperor, three nobles, and feudal lords in the Zhou ritual, and everything must follow the new rules of the Zhou ritual, 
so as not to cause chaos like in previous years. Regarding Wang Shudan's new Zhou ritual rules, Xian smiled and nodded in agreement. Even without Wang Shudan's Zhou ritual requirements, Xian would not engage in live person worship. Xian does not engage in live sacrifice, not because he is kind, but because there is no profit. Why should slaves be used for human sacrifice when they can be used as oxen, horses, and carry heavy loads to move forward? Sacrifice all the slaves who will cultivate the land for me. Without slaves to carry the weight of the Xian family for me, how can our Xian family live a peaceful life?